about to go to my antique show and my brother said last night he saw a barbecue so I'm gonna throw it in quickly. Hopefully. Uh, you can probably hold from here. Uh, I'll hold from here. Come on the other side. And we'll get my clothes dirty. Okay, go, go. Just can you get it in? You okay, hold it there. The stupid thing's gonna jam to the door. These stupid doors are always an issue. Wait. off and then go to my show show starts at 10 today so but it's only 10 till 2 so <coughs> only four hours you're not getting much done four hours usually it's slow in the morning and around one two o'clock is when it picks up so okay let me just drop this off and go to the show and if there's anything interesting at the show I'll do some video I'll show you a few things here and there and so on okay baskets and so on and uh, some of these baskets are like a hat like that. Look at the quality of workmanship into this. That's slow you down. Really cool looking stuff. So I see a bunch of arrowheads and beads. Different things here. Spears, paddle guards, knives. This is a really cool looking basket there. First Nation tool technology. So all this ones are going back well over 12,000 years up until a couple hundred years ago. You want to go and have a great one to sweep around. You bet. And see if I can find Shirley. That's actually awesome. So this vendor is a friend of mine, and uh, he's agreed to show a couple things on uh, uh, narrate some things I can show you. Uh, he'll explain a couple things. So he so showed stand by. Tell me a little bit about Most some of these things. All these projectiles are paddle, paddle darts, spears, knives, arrowheads. Uh, their date range is anything from about 12,000 years ago till a couple hundred years ago. Most of the ones you're seeing here on the table are from the Oregon Desert and Columbia River area, all collected pre-1960 by so, some of the early pioneers before the so, dams and railways were put in and covered a lot of those ancient uh, First Nation sites. So a lot of them are documented actual All collections. All the collections were purchased with notarized documentation of where and when they were uh, found and collected. And yeah, so these are the remains of basically 14 lifetimes. So, so what, was, what, what is this stone called? The black Obsidian. one? Obsidian. Obsidian, yeah. Sharpest material in all of North America. Even today it's used for, the surgeon would prefer to use obsidian versus metal. It can, can't, can't replicate the, the sharpness when it's been flaked and chipped like really? that. Really? Yeah. Now, uh, what kind of stones will these be? What would they be called? Agate, petrified wood, jasper. Which is petrified wood? Um, here's some examples of petrified wood. Let me see here. Here's a couple right here. One here, so another one wood, here, another one wood. there. Yeah, those are all petrified wood. This is petrified wood. So that was wood at one time? And that over was once wood, yeah. Over Turned years? The stone and First Nation came along, chipped it into a projectile or a spear point. Okay, wow. A lot of obsidian from Oregon, a lot more um, agate, jasper, and, and... And you can tell me a bit about that basket? Uh, pushing 100, 130, 40 years old. It's probably uh, Sequatin, uh, Nuklatin, or Statmec First Nation, so that's Lytton, Lillooet, or Kamloops area. So now this material, uh, where does... Cedar root. Cedar, cedar root. root. And then the designs are imbricated, attached on the outside, and that's uh, cherry bark, the black and red. Okay, awesome. So yeah, you've got your cedar root and cherry bark for those, and then these ones here are all cedar uh, cedar bark. That's a traditional Coast Salish hat, this is Haida, and this is a western style fedora, all made with uh, the bark of the cedar tree. Wow. Okay, now also like, uh, 
these beads here, how, how old are the beads roughly? Uh, some of those beads date going back over 3,000 years. That's some of the earliest forms of money used in North America for trade. Oh, really? Which is why when the fur trader um, came along much later on, the glass beads were so popular with First Nation and Indigenous people was because they were already using beads of many different sources, shell, bone, stone, for trade and currency. So that's why the glass was such a predominant uh, part of the fur trade. So now some of these masks here, are they like uh, This is a, a, what you'd call a, uh, a portrait mask. It's of a chief. And then this is uh, Patrick Amos. This is a bear. So Patrick Amos is part of the Nechelna Nation on Vancouver Island. And they were actually whalers. They were an amazing culture. Um, the Macaw and the Chelnuts were, were great trade partners and were fearless warriors on the coast of British Columbia and Washington State. So you got some awesome looking carvings here. Uh, I guess well known carvers that are pretty popular and uh, like these, yeah, a these are. Bit of everything, modern to, to ancient. So sure. now, these are what? What are these books here uh, exactly? Native, Native Northwest resources. Um, I, I bring a lot of the schools and things on my mobile museum tours. Um, that I do throughout uh, British Columbia here when I'm not uh, busy doing so you the educate show. educate children and at schools yeah, and so ages, on? Yeah, K, K right through grade 12. Pretty busy. I'll be in 60 to 70 schools this year. So. Also, okay, so uh, 70 so, schools just teaching kids about Native history and artifacts and memorabilia. And fur trade and gold. British Columbia history in a nutshell with uh, a whole lot of First Nation tool technologies, weaving, carving, and that sort of stuff thrown into the mix. and talking about some of the really unique cultures and traditional territories of British Columbia. Should I show? Okay. Okay. Okay, here's a little bit of a, some of uh, uh, BC artifacts, the Mobile Museum, if anybody's interested. Uh, they have schools or things. Um, he operates out of British Columbia, so... But a good friend of mine, his name is Tony, so... I appreciate it, Tony. Thank you very much for uh, a little bit of information for my... Okay, for my viewers and that, they'll definitely appreciate a little bit of history that I gave out there. Thanks, Cheers, thanks. In, sign them up. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, some pretty cool little things here and showcases. Here's a cool thing here, Royal Mortars, that's kind of cool. I'll tell you, there's a lot of uh, variety here, something for everyone. I mean, some prices are, you know, reasonable, some are expensive. I mean, that's how it kind of it goes, right? You know, if you're a collector and it's rare and people pay big money, but run -of mill stuff is uh, reasonable and cheap. You want to just uh, get some uh, mem memorabilia of things, yeah, if you were a kid or so on, or... It's a lot of cool stuff, I'll tell you. It's a bunch of military badges here. That's cool, Join American Red Cross. Kinda cool. Here's a circus one. Yeah, just a good variety, I'll tell you. There's one here for San Francisco. When Canadian Airlines advertised San Francisco. Or Canadian Pacific, well, Canadian Airlines, whatever, Canadian Pacific. Cool. A little cool product here, um, a friend of mine, it's his uh, kids, um, there's a little product here where instead of, you know how you have, you don't have loonies and quarters and stuff to get a buggy, they have a little product here, you slip it in, turn it, and it bypasses the, the cart itself so that you don't have to put no money in, this is your actual money. So tell us a bit about the product guys. So this thing, called the cart box, you just slip it into the cart and it unlocks automatically like as seen in the video. So he's got and a little, little bit awesome of a video. This. Yep. It has a hole so you can put it on your keychain. So you're never going to lose it. So when you stick it in, you got to turn it sideways and pull it out it. and you got a free cart. See, I'll do a little yeah. demonstration again. 
Yeah, I know. Come. Um, help yourself. Yeah. And next next time you don't have change, you'll have this in your keychain. It's got a hole in it and everything. So how do you get the product, guys? From Amazon, Amazon.ca, Amazon eBay.ca, and Etsy.ca. So, okay, so they're on they're Etsy, online. Amazon, and um, you search, eBay. You search and it's cart called boss. the Cart Boss you right cart here. Boss. Right. Search cart boss yeah. right here on Amazon.ca, eBay.ca, or Etsy.ca. Yeah, awesome, awesome product, yeah. guys. And it's awesome, guys. Hey, thanks yeah. very much for the display here. Yeah, and you'll see it on Amazon right here. Oh, Amazon here it is. Choice. Amazon Choice. Got a lot of reviews. Five stars already. Yeah, instructions for how to use it. Um, like that. Now the key thing that sets us apart from you know, the other like the video ones is that. You can put it in, take it out. The other ones that they sell at TNT and stuff, you have to leave it in. And okay. Then your keys are just dangling from yeah, Exactly. There. You don't so want your keys annoying. sitting there. Someone yeah, steal so your keys. Yeah. Right. So ideally, this comes out easy. automatically. Okay. There's awesome. Also, one more thing. It works yeah. on works on all the carts except for these, which are kind of rare. There's a little there's yeah. a bar that you have to insert, right? So yeah. you know, I think when you put it, th these ones are okay because all you have to do, you normally just put a coin in it, right, and that's yeah. it. Yeah. No locks. But with this one, right, you have to, you know, put a coin in it and then put a bar in it. Obviously, if you stuck this in and put, you can't put a bar in after that, right? Exactly. So it wouldn't work with that. But okay. most of them are like that. Sounds yeah. good. Awesome product, guys. Yeah. Just check it out. Cart Boss, Amazon, eBay, and Etsy. Okay. Yeah, Thanks, guys. Out. Thanks for doing the you, interview. Dude. What's left on my table? Let's look at that picture. Uh, just is what's basically left here. Bottom of the barrel. What's it? Uh, maybe just over 200 today. 204 or something. So we made just uh, just over 1,500 here at the show, so which is pretty good, not bad. Surprising, just no real interest in this Pyrex here. So I don't know. I saw most of my beer taps are gone. There's a Terry Fox print still there. Okay.